Listen carefully to this interval. Now, listen to another interval. These intervals were both the same. But, they sounded different. Then, how can they be the same? Yes, both intervals are what musicians would call a perfect fifth. Confused? Before you run away and think this is too complicated, let us take a closer look at intervals. What did the two samples played had in common? First, they consisted of two notes. One, two, one, two. Played one after the other. Second, the second note in each sample was seven semitones higher than the first note of the sample. What was different? The notes of the second sample were a whole tone, or two half steps, higher than in the first sample. That was the only difference. In order to say that the intervals are the same we have to look for similarities. An interval describes only the distance between two pitches. Therefore, the absolute pitches are not of importance. The interval description is a relative measure. Any two tones that are seven half steps apart build an interval, which is called a perfect fifth. Perfect fifth. Intervals describe a relative relationship between two notes. The absolute frequencies of the two involved notes get lost in the interval name. Why are intervals important? Remember the sample in our absolute pitch instructions lesson? We played the song Silent Night two times, once starting from C. And then starting from G. You can easily recognize both melodies as Silent Night. Yet, the absolute pitches are not the same. But the relative distances from note to note are the same. In the first example the first note is a C. Then the melody goes up two half steps, or expressed as a musical term, a major second up. And then two half steps down, or a major second down. And so on. The red numbers show the change from the previous note in half steps. In the second example the first note is different from the first note in the first example. Here the melody starts with the G. But then all the following notes have the same relative distance as in the first example. A major second up. Then a major second down. And so on. Even so the absolute pitches are different. The correspondence of the relative pitch changes make it possible to easily recognize the melody as Silent Night. This simple example demonstrates the importance of intervals. Intervals build a fundamental element of music. You may have been confused in the introductory sample and correctly diagnosed that the sounds are different, but it was the similarities you had to listen for, not the apparently absolute differences. Music is much less about absolute pitches or absolute tempos than about the emphasis on relative characteristics and concepts. And if you could easily recognize the melody of Silent Night in both samples, then you know you can acquire relative pitch. Don't be confused by the different absolute pitches. There are the relative changes that make up the melody. The relative changes from one note to the next note are responsible for the perception of a melody. Therefore, intervals are the basic building blocks for melodic activities. Now, let us familiarize with some terms related to intervals. Intervals come in three flavors. Melodic ascending. The second note is higher than the first note. Melodic descending. The second note is lower than the first note. And harmonic. Both notes are played simultaneously.
Another important term for interval description is the semitone or half step. To better illustrate what a half step is, let us look at the musical ladder. In our Western music, the octave is divided into 12 equally distant half steps. This decision makes the half step the smallest pitch difference in our notation system. To determine the number of half steps between two notes, just count the half steps between the notes. For example, from C to G, there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 half steps. Now, for those interested in physics, a short explanation of the relationship between frequencies and half steps is given. Our ear detects sounds through the eardrum. That is, the eardrum swings with the frequencies that come through the air to the eardrum. That means we only can hear frequencies. Now, how can we set two frequencies in relation to each other? One way is to divide the higher frequency by the lower frequency. That is, we can take the pitches of any two notes and divide the higher frequency by the lower frequency. If we then take the logarithm of that ratio and divide it by the factor 0.250858, we get the number of half steps between the notes. The factor 0.250858 is the logarithm of the 12th root of 2. Too complicated? Let us do an example. We take the note's DNA from our second sample interval. We divide the frequency of A. That is 440 Hz. And divide it by the frequency of the note D. As a ratio, we get 1.4983071. When we take the logarithm of that number, we get 0 0.1756008. Now we divide this number by the logarithm of the 12th root of 2, and we get 7. Interesting, we can calculate the number of half steps just from the note's frequencies. But, not really useful, you do not have to know the frequencies of notes to determine intervals. This was only to show you the relationship between absolute pitch frequencies and relative distances. The absolute pitches of two notes, and therefore their sounds, may be different. But if the distance between two notes is the same, then the relationship between the two pitches also stays the same. And these relationships are expressed in musical terms as intervals. Or in other words, the number of half steps between two notes get assigned interval names. The relationship between two notes can be calculated from their frequencies. The result is the number of half steps between the notes. Musicians usually use interval names, instead of the number of half steps, to express the distance between two notes. Since there are 12 half steps in an octave, we only have 12 plus 1 simple intervals to learn. Intervals that are larger than an octave are called compound intervals. The interval name consists of an interval number and an interval quality. So let us go through the interval names. The interval number is the number of scale note names the two notes include. That is, the same as the number of staff and ledger lines and spaces they include. For example, from C4 to C4, there is only one ledger line included. Therefore, the interval number is 1. From C to D, there is a line node and a space node included. That makes 2. From C to E, there are two line nodes and one space node included. Therefore, the interval number is 3. When we continue like that, we get the interval numbers for the whole octave. When we now take a look at the number of half steps, we see that the number of half steps does not correspond to the interval number. The number of half steps will be used in the final determination of the quality of an interval. Now to understand the naming of the qualities of intervals, we have to consider that qualities have to express some universality. Therefore, before we continue with the quality names, we will take a look at the concept of inverting intervals. An interval gets inverted by raising its lower note by an octave. Let us look at an example.
This is the inverted interval. When we invert an interval, we get another interval. Except for the interval that lies in the middle. All intervals larger than six half steps turn into a smaller interval. That means intervals larger than six half steps have a relation to a smaller interval and vice versa. Therefore, let us take a look at only the smaller intervals. Here are all intervals depicted in half steps up to six half steps. To find out the relationship between an original and an inverted interval, we have to put them in relation. By turning the notes around the middle note, we get a view on the inverted world. We have colored the steps that belong to the C major scale, blue. If we now compare the colors of the two worlds, then we see four blue full length lines. That means these four intervals can be inverted and will still have their inverted note in the C major scale. The quality of intervals that fulfill this criteria is called perfect. So we can complete the interval names for the following intervals. Intervals, which have 0, 5, 7, and 12 half steps. Interval with 0 half steps. Perfect unison. Interval with five half steps. Perfect fourth. Interval with seven half steps. Perfect fifth. Interval with twelve half steps. Perfect octave. The naming of perfect interval can also be looked at from a historical background. Historically the scales were developed from physical laws, see our video, scales and natural ratios. The perfect octave, perfect fourth and perfect fifth are very strong overtones of their fundamental, and thus were deemed as consonant sounds. The remaining intervals in our C major scale, or any major scale for that matter, have, of course, a quality of major. Major second. Major third. Major sixth. Major seventh. Once we have the basic interval number. The intervals are more precisely defined by the number of half steps they contain. Therefore we will now complement our C major scale with the five missing half step numbers to get a chromatic scale. The interval for one half step is missing. To depict this interval. We will take the major interval and lower the upper note by a half step with a flat. In this way we keep the interval number at two. But the interval is now only one half step. So we have to change the quality from major to minor. We do the same for the missing three half steps interval. We will take the major interval and lower the upper note by a half step with a flat. In this way we keep the interval number at three. But the interval is now only three half steps. So the quality is minor. If you thought you have got the interval naming, here comes another exception. The note that lies in the middle of the octave has an interval size of six half steps. Since the note is in the middle, the inversion will be the same. But because the note does not belong to the eight notes of the C major scale, the interval is not called a perfect interval. But still it gets a special name. Tritone. A whole tone is two semitones, or two half steps. 
since six half steps contain three whole tones. The interval name, tritone, is an abbreviation for three tones, a tone meaning a whole tone for that matter. The tritone has a special meaning in music. It is considered as a harmonic and melodic dissonant sound. The rest of the missing intervals have the quality of minor again. Minor sixth. Minor seventh. Wow, but we are not finished yet. If we look at the intervals in a different musical context, then the spelling of intervals is more complicated. You will find diminished and augmented intervals. For example, instead of saying tritone, you could say augmented fourth or diminished fifth. All three spellings represent six half steps. And to make things more complicated, yes, there is a term minor fifth, but it is not a tritone, the term is used in the quarter tone and other scales. For more information about spelling interval see our video chord explorer. Since you can only hear the distance between two pitches, or more precisely the ratio between the frequencies, we will not complicate things further and stick to the C major key, and use the interval qualities perfect, major, minor and tritone in our exercises. A simpler way would be just to name the number of half steps between two notes, but this would not express the musical context. The interval number is derived from the number of lines and spaces an interval contains. The number of half steps is used to assign the quality to an interval. Now it is time for our first interval exercise. We start very simple. You have to listen to a random ascending interval from the frame choices. Your task is to click inside the frame in which the interval is. That means you only have to differentiate if the heard interval has a small or a large distance between the notes. Now it is your turn. You probably solved the exercises by listening only for the second note, and decided if the second note was a high note, then the interval must be in the box for the large pitch distances. That is trying to solve the problem with absolute pitch recognition. That is okay if you have absolute pitch. However, it is not the right way. You really should learn to listen for the ratio of the two pitches. That is, you should try to keep the sound of the first note in your mind, and when the second note is played listen for the new sound, that gets created through the interactions of the two pitches. The best way is of course, when you hum the first note during the play of the second note. In this way you can physically hear the ratio between the two frequencies. In the exercises the starting note will be random, not always C. The frequency ratios between the two pitches, regardless of the first note, will reveal the number of half steps between them. Everything lies in the change from one moment to the next. When there is no change, we will lose interest in the subject, until it is completely filtered out and recognized no more by the brain. Therefore change of frequencies will get our brain's attention. The brain will try to capture the change. One way is to merge the new sound with the old sound. That is, producing interactions or ratios between the two sounds. Differences tell the brain what has changed to the current situation. This relative change is what we are looking for, not the absolute situation. If we can extract the change as ratios, then we can build and expand unknown patterns by applying these differentiating traits to any starting situation. 
If you are a beginner then, if you thought that learning intervals with harmonic intervals is easier, since you can hear the ratios and don't have to build the interactions yourself, then you are mistaken. Because, as a beginner, you are missing the references. To learn to listen for the differences, it is better to go actively through the process of building the interactions. Therefore, we will start our interval learning with melodic intervals. Yes, this forces you to build the interactions yourself. However, it is easier to remember and build a reference with consecutively played single notes than with simultaneously played notes. On the other hand, remember, as John Lennon said, I couldn't walk, so I tried to run, it may be better to start slowly. In the next lesson we will introduce you to our interval learning method, the interval overtone method. You will be guided from simple melodic intervals, through listening to harmonic intervals, to compound harmonic intervals.